Hi everyone, good day, it's Demetrius here again from Obi Pixel. Today I'll be talking to you about my OBSEC uh, brand with regards to information security, digital forensics and so on. In this video, it's going to be a short video, I'm going to take you through a presentation I've put together with regards to a new technique in terms of phishing. So this new phishing tactic um, hijacks email protections, okay? Then it does that to mask the links. E email security company Barracuda has exposed a new phishing campaign that exploits legitimate URL protection services to actually disguise malicious links and emails. This tactic really began in mid-May this year, 2024, and it turns anti-phishing measures into actually a tool for phishing attacks, basically targeting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of organizations globally. So let me take you into this PDF that I've put together, and you can always download this free PDF at the bottom in the description. By all means, it's a free of charge PDF. I don't ask for details, I don't ask for contact information, I don't ask for email addresses. You just click the link, download the PDF, you have it. So let me take you into this PDF quickly. All right, so essentially what's happening with this particular type of exploit is very interesting. So how does this new phishing tactic work? The idea is we first begin with what we call a URL protection or URL protection exploitation. Okay, so essentially what's going to happen is, let's pop my little screen over here. What's happening is the URL protection exploitation, the attackers take advantage of URL protection services used by companies. And these services typically rewrite links in business emails, okay, so that it helps the whole process of checking the emails, quarantine the email hyperlinks and so on. But it it rewrites the links in business emails, redirecting them through the protection services for threat detection, threat scanning, real-time threat analytics. Now, attackers have worked out what we call link wrapping. So the attackers wrap their phishing links in a legitimate protection service domain, decreasing the likelihood of automatic detection and filtering. Then uh, what's been found is there's compromised accounts. So researchers believe that attackers have, well, they use already compromised business accounts with URLs, uh, as in the with URL protection services companies, to actually generate pre-wrapped links, almost like shortened hyperlinks. And um, the idea is then that the phishing email distribution kicks in. So the rewritten URLs are then included in subsequent phishing emails, masking the malicious nature behind say a trusted domain so what am i talking about here well let's let's look at the things that have been found okay so a number of things have been looked at so first of all the target the campaign started targeting hundreds of organizations since mid-may 2024 and the lure is very simple the phishing emails included fake password reset reminders which happens all the time and fake DocuSign documents, as you know, to digitally sign a document, to lure victims into malicious websites, okay? And then of course the domains that were involved, the phishing domains tied to the campaign include things like the things that have been discovered, the 1BF uh, domain uh, and the, the Claire Loke sort of .com domains, and there's many other domains that have been tied up to this phishing campaign. Now, let me give you an example of a practical example of this so you get an understanding of what I'm talking about here. So in terms of the scenario, okay, you receive an email from what appears you know, to be your company's IT department requesting a password reset. The email contains a link that seems to go through a legitimate URL protection service. Okay. So the email appearance looks like this. So the subject line will read password request, uh, password reset request. And the body asks you to click the link to proceed with the reset. The link will look more than likely something like this. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash protectionservice.com forward slash check question mark URL and a hyperlink that's going to point to a particular malicious site to do the reset. Obviously, that'll be a, not the actual domain, but it'll be a domain that's registered, right? So when you start to see something like this, it's masked. It's actually going to wrap that actual real link underneath this link so what happens the url protection service rewrites the link for security checks 
normally redirecting to the original site if it's safe. In this attack, the rewritten link is used to bypass email filters, as initially appeared in this, you know, in this little example that you see. So, because it reads the text, whenever you look at URL protection services, they do content filtering. Now, when they start to see things like protection service, and they they look at details like this, and it sees the check options and so on, it can basically look at the link rewrite it and realize actually this is not an issue it'll bypass potential filters and it looks like it appears to be legitimate the outcome is of course clicking the link redirects to the phishing site designed to look like a legitimate login page of whatever site they're asking you to do the reset on and of course then you'll be entering your credentials on this page and have a compromised account at some point but remember they're not just going to have a normal site they're going to have a full-blown certificate on their site as well so it will appear near impossible to see that it is not a legitimate website so really what we need to start doing is preventative measures you know verify unexpected emails with the sender through a separate communication channel i know this is going to slow things down uh, it's a real tricky thing to deal with using sort of multi-layered security measures okay you can combine sort of advanced filters and also some user training that'll help a lot and then of course regular updates and patch security patches and uh, patch all the security systems that you have in place to recognize any sort of new phishing techniques another sort of practical example like in this scenario to show you this tactic you receive an email that appears to be from a blank, you know, sorry, sorry, from your bank. What am I saying from a blank? Sometimes it actually appears as a blank email message as well, but it appears to come from your bank with the subject unusual activity detected. Of course, then you start thinking, oh, okay, what's happened here? The email body then prompts you to verify your account information. Ah, now I start to leak out information from a person's system. So you, by clicking on the link, it seems to go through the legitimate URL protection service. The link could look like something like this, you know, protectionservice.com forward slash verify, blah, blah, blah. And it pushes off to a login page, making it appear legitimate. You know, so th then clicking the link redirects you to the phishing site, which then mimics, say, a bank's login page. Where you're entering your details, you can compromise your information. And 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 these things, I've, I see this all the time. I've, I've seen a, a number of my customers falling prey to this. In fact, I've had a number of customers falling prey to this with payments. And when they're trying to purchase, say, a property, and they've actually sent the money directly to hackers instead of actually going through the property company. And they've, you know, I've seen companies, sorry, I've seen people lose hundreds of thousands of pounds. So it's a pretty easy thing to do, but it's got to be well-timed and well set up. And hackers have the time and they have the right setups to do this. So what, we, what can we do as preventative tips, right? Well, always verify suspicious emails by contacting the company directly, the institution directly. You know, avoid clicking on links that you may think are possibly strange. Or just right-click on the links, see where they're going, see if they're going to the right website, look at the domain at the top to make sure it's the correct site, look at the certificate as well to make sure it's registered to the correct place. And then, of course, when your company adds, for example, in their websites, multi-factor authentication, well, then they can't be easily duped, right? Because the attacker would have to have the ability to issue some kind of multi-factor to you, which you won't have the right device for it, which means the attacker won't be able to attack you very easily. So this is you know, another practical taking a look at this. So Barracuda's response, which was really interesting that I found on, on, online, was, you know, when, we, when asked about the effectiveness of URL protection services against these types of attacks, a, a Barracuda spokesman stated that their own products would detect the malicious domains. However, they did not comment on other email protection services. Well, that's rather interesting. So they're saying, well, they, they, their protection services will work. Well, you know, I don't in any way whatsoever doubt that it's definitely quite possible to get through Barracuda systems. It just takes time for the attack to figure out the thresholds and know exactly how Barracuda systems work when it comes to protection. And then at some point in time, they'll be bypassed. You know, this statement is a very fancy statement for marketing, and it is an interesting statement from somebody who's trying to quelch down, you know, the, the public relations. But in all honesty, believe me, if an attacker wants to get in, they'll find a way. Organizations really should deploy products that provide multi-defense layers. Absolutely. I mean, 
there is obviously Barracuda's email protection system, but there's many others. And then Barracuda does have what we call a machine learning technology combined with link protection. It ensures that at least uh, the, they'll pick up the most amount of problems coming through. Then they're, they're not perfect, but they definitely are one of the best out there. And uh, Barracuda did mention this on SC Media. That's a pretty important important from their, from their perspective. Now, there are other similar phishing tactics out there. Link shortening services. I mean, I use them all the time, right? And I use them to shorten hyperlinks. They are problematic sometimes because a lot of companies don't necessarily like those because the, the actual hyperlink is shortened and you can't really see the final outcome. Look, the right firewalls in place, the right edge systems in place can quarantine links check them before they let them come through this is the whole idea of doing content filtering uh so the problem is attackers can use these link shortening services now you can check these links you can actually put them into a browser go check where they go and then once you're 100 sure that the link's going to the right place then you can click it correctly and do what you need to do linkedin also created something really cool they created smart links so what they've done is they take so in october basically they take hyperlinks and they modify the hyperlinks and turn them into smart links so then they redirect uh, people to the correct site using their own hyperlink so that they know that that's a LinkedIn site so then they, they do their own checking in the back end but you know similar phishing techniques techniques have happened where you know LinkedIn smart links have been uh, used with uh, for example uh, phishing campaigns to basically redirect people to malicious sites. This was discovered by Cofen's company in October uh, last year. So, and of course, you know, Google is no no issue here, specifically in the fact that yeah, they still are prone to attacks. Well, Google's AMP, the Accelerated Mobile Pages sort of framework, uh, have been used, all right, to actually append malicious URLs to Google.com links. And this can allow hackers to exploit Google's trusted sort of status and force people into a false insecurity. In the meantime, you're not going to the right Google site, you're going to actually a phishing site. So, you know, when, when hackers need to find a way to get in, believe me, they're going to find it. And see, we have to start working with different multiple layers here to start detecting these phishing links. There's also been public cloud service abuse. You know, cyber criminals have used public cloud services like Google Cloud for example, or Amazon, you know, or Microsoft Azure, you know, AWS from Amazon and Microsoft Azure, of course, to host phishing kits, right? And generate seemingly legitimate hyperlinks, URLs. Uh, this was revealed by uh, Rear Security or Resecurity in February 2024 in a blog post this year. So this is nothing new in the industry. Okay. So what are the implications of email security? Well, these sophisticated sort of phishing attacks and tactics really highlight the need for multi-layered email protection that goes beyond just basic domain filtering. You know, as attackers continue sort of to find ways to disguise malicious links, sort of with legitimate domains, with actual domains that even have certificates on them, organizations really need to adapt their security measures accordingly. Okay? Otherwise, we're gonna have constant problems with this. And um, here's some related sort of security concerns around this. Uh, with OpenSSH, there's a bug that was found, CVE 2024-6409. It's a remote code execution uh, exploit uh, and race condition flaw, uh, which poses as a low sort of immediate impact due to being present in the priv serve child process with privileges, uh, uh, sort, of, sort of fewer privileges, but it actually allows privilege escalation, which then gives me remote access into a system. So that's definitely something I've seen as a uh, tactic being used in phishing attacks. The muddy water attacks, recent intrusions involve the delivery of phishing emails with uh, a very interesting new um, backdoor called bug sleep. And uh, it's basically it's purporting to be a sort of a webinar or an online course invitation. And that forces people into false insecurity and they're clicking those links and uh, all of a sudden they're not realizing they're going to phishing websites. I came across this because I've built a number of computer training courses of my own and uh, I run them through my OB Academy and I've had to, I've, I've found uh, people and like hackers using my, my um, products online 
in a fake way to create phishing attacks to actually force people to go to a phishing site supposedly purchasing my courses but not so that's how i came across the muddy water attack and, and, and you know i'm now starting to do very specialized hyperlinks that are used for my products so that people definitely know for sure they're going to my website and for sure my products are being purchased so it, it's a little bit of work to do this there's a lot of work in the back end but uh yeah you can actually set up your service for this and then netgear for example netgear routers has a number of vulnerabilities uh there was a vulnerability that was found recently with the xr1000 nighthawk gaming router and there was a quick remediation around this um the problem is it allowed us to do cross-site scripting so you could do malicious javascript code and put it into hyperlinks and then put those into a, a phishing attack and then you can actually manipulate someone's netgear router and get around some of the vulnerabilities that those routers have if they're not fully updated and yeah i mean these, these are interesting sort of concerns that i've seen in the industry today with this kind of masking of hyperlinks making them look like legitimate uh links used in a protection service but they're not you know so th this is the kind of stuff you're getting to see so in conclusion right these examples sort of illustrate that you know you can have sophisticated phishing attacks today and um they've they're now just they're not just targeting people in a normal way they're actually targeting and exploiting protection services to sort of mask the the hyperlinks and create malicious hyperlinks inside them right so it makes phishing emails appear more legitimate right making it even more difficult for the unsuspecting users to truly figure out what's going on and it's also making it very difficult for some of the protection systems out there to detect and have all these email filters to pick up and safeguard so really we need a uh, it's crucial to have a verification system an authentication system to allow clicking on certain hyperlinks only by certain types of scenarios and uh, certain types of emails and certain types of situations and then also there needs to be some form of additional multi-layer process when it comes to hyperlinks it's not going to be an easy solution but a multi-factor authentication process and, and regular sort of updates will help a lot with certain types of links so when you're forcing people to go and connect to something you should really enable additional services like mfa right and then of course really the, the the best thing you can do really to keep up to date with all this is to just stay informed about the latest sort of phishing strategies um that are out there and then this will help you significantly sort of reduce the risk of either becoming a victim or having your company be one of the companies that gets manipulated into a false insecurity and having phishing attacks actually be successful so i wanted to give you a quick little roundup on the new technique when it comes to masking hyperlinks and and really it's a new phishing technique that's been around since may this year but it's masking as a protection services hyperlink which could have malicious javascript code underneath which could also point to a malicious site and then ultimately protection services are out there are not exactly all picking this kind of thing up luckily barracuda did pick up uh this kind of attack recently so that's pretty good but not all the protection services are working the same way and not all the uh <laughs> new phishing tactics and hijacking uh is going to follow the same process when it comes to masking themselves as protection masks or protection services i should say so just because you get a hyperlink that's pointing to a protection service that is supposedly scraping email and content analyzing it in real time and actually checking email doesn't necessarily mean that it's a correct email so my advice is every time you have a hyperlink take the hyperlink open up a brand new tab on your browser preferably a private tab so that there's not necessarily enough tracking there and then just put the hyperlink in there and then see where it goes if it goes to the leg legitimate website look at the domain look at the domain to make sure it's registered to the right place check the certificate as well in that hyperlink maybe you just click the lock right it's really easy to do and then just confirm that that hyperlink is legitimate if you can with a company that actually sent you the hyperlink and if companies do the right thing when it comes to logging onto systems resetting credentials all that kind of stuff you should really upfront make it mandatory for people to start using multi-factor authentication because by doing that we can alleviate a lot of this problem
All right, everyone, thank you for your time. This is Demetrius here again from OBPixel and today OBSEC, my security company. And I wanted to give you a quick little video. I haven't done a security video in a while. And uh, just to warn you about this, because I'm starting to see more and more of these phishing attacks as I'm doing more penetration testing in the last couple of weeks. And uh, thank you to my subscribers. Thank you for listening and watching. Anybody new, I appreciate your time. A very simple click at the top just to approve the uh, algorithm so that the videos go to other people will be much appreciated. Thank you for your time. And to everyone else, please be careful with the links that you get in your emails. Don't always trust hyperlinks. Always check where they go first before you assume the privacy is expected. Thanks everyone. Demetrius here again, signing out.